The second trailer for Pixar's newest movie, Lightyear, has just dropped, and it has so much to break down. You definitely missed some Easter eggs, references, and hidden details, so let's get started. The trailer opens with a giant round spaceship touching down for a landing, and even though we're just seconds in, we already have our first reference. Look again at the shape of that ship. Does it remind you of the one from another extremely famous movie? While it wasn't piloted by members of Star Command, it looks like Lightyear has taken some serious inspiration from Steven Spielberg's 1982 classic, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Look at the E.T. spaceship and you'll see it's very similar to the one seen here. Each of them are big spherical ships, and they both even have a spire on top. And there's more awesome sci-fi references you probably missed too. Right after the ship lands, we see Buzz cresting a ridge with the spire of his suspiciously E.T.-like ship still visible in the background. Buzz gives the date for his mission log and tells us that it's Stardate 3901. Stardates aren't actually a real method of dating at all, and in fact, they were first made up for another sci-fi series. In Star Trek, the original series, you might remember Captain Kirk starting off his captain logs by giving a stardate. The numbers were completely random and didn't mean anything in order to obscure just when exactly the show was meant to take place. Though eventually, for Star Trek The Next Generation, they formalized the system, with the first number designating the century, the second number based on the season of the show, and the rest still being mostly random. But there's something else interesting you might not have realized. Remember that Buzz tells us that it's Stardate 3901. Do you recall Buzz's first lines in the original Toy Story? When he first comes to life in Andy's room, he also starts Mission Log and tells us that this is Stardate 4072. Buzz Light, your Mission Log, Stardate 4072. My ship is run off course en route to Sector 12. Is this similar to the Star Trek numbering system and that the first two digits might represent the year? Which means that Buzz we see in the first Toy Story movie thinks that roughly a year has passed since this moment in Lightyear. Could it represent even more time? We'll have to wait for the movie to find out, but you won't have to wait for more secrets in this trailer. Next, we see Buzz, now without his trademark bubble helmet, approaching a spaceport where he'll learn he'll be part of a hyperspeed test flight. We get a good look at the Pip-Boy from Fallout-like communicator on Buzz's arm, which in addition to recording his mission logs, also appears to be able to do atmospheric scanning to determine whether the air is breathable and has buttons labeled Control, Feed, and VCTR, which probably stands for Vector and would aid Buzz in navigation. His mission log is interrupted by Commander Hawthorne, though, who we've learned from the leaked concept art that her first name is Alicia. And there's something else you've definitely missed here, when we get a good look at the insignia on Buzz and Alicia's arms. Take a closer look at it and see if it reminds you of anything. Looks like the ship from the beginning of the trailer, right? The ship is taking off in the logo, and it also bears a strong resemblance to the Atari logo. The Atari was a game console from the 1980s, and one of the most infamous games is the one based on, you guessed it, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. The game is regarded as one of the worst ever made and has been blamed as one of the reasons for the video game crash of the early 80s, which almost destroyed the entire industry. Is Buzz's patch on his arm yet another reference to E.T.? I'm gonna say yes. Are you ready for more secrets and easter eggs? Because there's lots more to come. Commander Hawthorne asks Buzz if he's ready, and we see Buzz in an outfit that's more reminiscent of another sci-fi movie pilot's outfit than his usual Space Ranger suit. Do you know which one? It might not be orange here, but Buzz's suit looks a lot like the one Rebel pilots wear in Star Wars. Buzz's ship, which we learned from the first trailer is called the XL-01, is prepared for takeoff, as opposed to Star Cruiser 42, which was a ship in the animated series. It's clear now that Buzz is the test pilot for a new method of travel. Commander Hawthorne and Buzz then both get to say half of Buzz's most famous catchphrase, to infinity and beyond. Did you catch that? They touch the tips of their index fingers together. Yet another E.T. reference. At this point, it's definitely more than just a coincidence, but just wait until you see what happens next. The XL-01 takes off into space, and as Sox the robot cat presses a button, if you pause, pause, get it? Anyway, you can see that there's an indicator light for crystallic lock, confirming that this is a test of the use of crystallic fusion. In the animated series, crystallic fusion was a form of power that came with crystals mined on the underwater world of Bathyos, and confirms that these are what the crystals shown in the first trailer were. If you're quick, you can see Buzz press a button for hyperlaunch and the ship immediately takes off, with the star stretching out like in Star Wars when a ship enters hyperspace. Huh, hyperlaunch, hyperspace, yet another sci-fi movie connection? And get ready because there's more. Buzz screams as the XL-01 travels through space before exiting out of a portal or a jump gate of some kind. We also get a good look at the controls of the XL-01, which looks similar to the buttons on Buzz's arm communicator. It appears that Star Command is nothing if not consistent in their designs. We also see that there's pieces of confetti strewn around the cockpit, 
and some even on socks. Perhaps this was meant to be part of a celebration for the first ship to hyperjump? But there's no time to celebrate, since you likely missed yet another easter egg. Buzz's ship lands on what looks to be a desolate planet, and he fires a flare into the sky as he tries to reach Star Command on his communicator, saying, Buzz Lightyear to Star Command, come in Star Command, before asking, why don't they answer? Once again saying the exact same thing he did in the first Toy Story when he first comes alive on Andy's bed. Star Command, come in. Do you read me? Why don't they answer? Then we see a shot of Buzz in his orange flight suit, carrying what looks to be one of the crystals used to power space flight. And here we have yet another sci-fi reference. If flight suit and the jump to hyperspace don't clue you in, Lightyear looks to be showing its love for more sci-fi movies than just E.T. And here, Buzz's situation looks very similar to when Luke Skywalker lands his X-Wing on Dagobah in Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Buzz's flight suit now looks almost exactly like a rebel pilot's, and even has a cute robot companion with him, just like Luke had in R2-D2. Buzz is just lucky his ship isn't sinking into the swamp the way Luke's did since it's doubtful he'll be learning to control the Force on this mission. There's plenty more obscure references you missed the first time, though. Buzz is tackled by a mysterious figure, who we soon learn is Hawthorne, but not the Hawthorne you think it is. This isn't Commander Alicia Hawthorne, but her granddaughter, Izzy. And check out the number on her armor. Does it seem special to you? Anytime the number 42 pops up in a work in sci-fi, it's almost guaranteed to be a reference to Douglas Adams' novel series The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy where it's revealed that the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything, is 42. But back to this being Commander Hawthorne's granddaughter. Clearly, something isn't right. Sox calculates how much time has passed, and we learn they've been gone 62 years, 7 months, and 5 days. What? I can't believe it, and neither can Buzz. The trailer really kicks off now, and we see Izzy and Buzz running up to a fortress with the word Zap on it several times. We know from toys being released for the film that Izzy is a member of a group called Zap Patrol, who fights back against the threat of Zerg on the planet Takani Prime. That's right, thanks to a toy, you're now one of the very first to know the name of the planet Lightyear takes place on. Izzy enlists Buzz to assist Zap Patrol in their mission to destroy an alien ship, and introduces us to the rest of the team, which includes Darby, an explosives expert, who joined the team to shave some time off her sentence. And if you're quick, you can also see from her suit that Darby's last name is Steel. Next up is Mo Morrison, who is about to find out that he signed up for a lot more than just a fun boot camp thing. Buzz looks to be in some trouble as he's carried away by a Zyklops, one of the yellow robot soldiers who make up the army that serves Zerg. These appear to be quite similar to the Zerg bots from Toy Story 2, who had the exact same yellow and black color scheme. Next, we see Buzz wielding a cool electric melee weapon to slice through an alien tentacle full of green goo, and then against a swarm of flying armored bugs where he also has a new laser pistol. And there's another amazing sci-fi easter egg coming up. We hear Sox explain that the probability of survival for this mission they're on is 38.2%. Do you remember another non-human creature delivering a similar line? It's right, Star Wars again, this time also from The Empire Strikes Back, when C-3PO tells Han Solo that the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3720 to 1, or 0.027%. So Buzz and the gang at least have better odds than the crew of the Millennium Falcon did. Next, we get some great shots of Zerg in his new form, which has changed quite a bit since we first saw him in Toy Story 2. Izzy tells Buzz that her grandma, Commander Hawthorne, always believed in him, and we see that she's even been memorialized with a statue that appears to show her older than when we saw her at the beginning of the trailer, so it looks like she at the very least got to live a long life. Zerg then reveals he's gotten some weapon upgrades, including a grappling hook arm. But did you catch that shot that's almost the exact recreation of one from a previous movie? Other than being reversed, the pose Zerg takes with his triple-barreled blaster is almost exactly the same shot from Toy Story 2. A robotic voice then asks for the crew to record their last words, and we can see that these are coming from the ship's computer, which is named Ivan. Ivan is likely an acronym, since Pixar likes to give their robots and AI humans names like WALL-E, which stands for Waste Allocation Load Lifter Earth Class. What do you think Ivan stands for, though? Buzz's last words recorded by Ivan are, Do not vomit inside the vehicle. And Ivan then asks if you're satisfied with recording, please select 1. It looks like the technology for automated voice controls hasn't improved with the advent of interplanetary travel. Buzz tries to get Izzy to do the same E.T.-style finger-touch thing he used to do with her grandmother, but Izzy isn't having it, thinking that he wants her instead to pull his finger. If you look in the background, you can see another character too. While Darby and Moe are both wearing their full armor, which makes them look like robots, next to them is an actual robot. This is the same robot we saw in the first trailer, and we know it's a robot because of the name, Eric. Eric, just like Ivan, probably stands for something, 
but it might also be a reference to another robot named Eric, which was the first ever British robot that was built all the way back in 1928. After that, the second trailer for Lightyear is over. I hope you liked the video and found some things you missed the first time in the second Lightyear trailer. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs.